left Silent Grove campground, Bells Gorge. Um, I've seen this lookout once before, it was overcast. A bit earlier in the morning at the moment. We're heading west. I'm going to go to a place called Leonard's Gorge. Went and had a look there the other day, but it's about a three hour return walk and it was a bit late in the day. So I'm going to give it another crack. Bell Creek down here. You might see some dust off on the horizon. That goes up towards Bell's Gorge, I reckon. After Leonard's Gorge, we're heading to Mount Hart for three nights. A little bit of civilization there. What I mean by that is they've got a store and a restaurant. Hopefully we'll get it there without too much more maintenance issues. Probably only about 10 minutes into the walk. What is this rocky stuff? Following a creek bed again. There's a little creek here. It's meant to be a grade four track. And three kilometers return. And the sign said allow two hours. Getting close to a platform, I think this is as far as it goes. The oh, platform's still another 150 metres away. Mm. 35 minutes in. Now, the information sign back there says this water runs through a fault line. It's not as if um, the water's carved this gorge. Welcome to Mount Hart Homestead camp area. Ablutions and stuff up there, they got solar and gas hot water. I had a cold shower, must have had the solar stuff. A little um, swimming spot down there, not too bad, a bit chilly. Kimberly fresh as they say. Allow fires here, allow generators here. Haven't got any hours on at the moment. Old mate over here says that the sunsets are worthwhile um, going up for. Boss has already been out for a paddle down the creek, down there, and it's, it actually runs back through here. And going out for dinner, taking the princess out to the restaurant, 60 bucks a head, set menu, three course. I'll report back on that. Um, Maintenance, always always about maintenance, isn't it? We're coming in here and um, I reckon I heard a bit, a bit of boost leak coming from around the turbo. So get in there and have a look at the inlet uh, inlet um, tubes tomorrow. Have a look around. See if we can find where the air is coming out. Not much else. I haven't told you. I've kept this a secret. Uh, when we're at Bell Gorge, when I was doing the brakes, as you do when you're doing maintenance, I was having a look around and um, front mount for the canopy missing its bolt. Front mount for the canopy this side bolt loose. There's two other mounts center rear center rear either side and they were both tight tighten that up um, I had a gash um, well spare bolt and nut and stuff I'll see if I can see show you it's a um, Allen head one actually oh, you probably won't be able to see it it's up in here anyhow it's an Allen I put an Allen head bolt in there with some um, washers a nylock stainless nylock nut on there fortunately could pair that up. So it's done done up like a gunner's son, nice and tight. Let's see if I can find a, a proper replacement for that um, when we get back into broom. Not much else at the moment, I hope. Busted another tie-down strap on the um, boat. 
It's the second one in the strip. We bought some new ones when we were at Broom just recently. So that was good timing. And it's just the sharp edge along the, the hull, the bottom of the hull, that's um, cutting through uh, the tape. Oh, I can show you this too. And I'm not lying. Gibb River Road, we've done that. We've done the full Gibber River Road from east to west. We've been across the Derby, even though we're still back on it. And we're here, as I say, Charlie, no, Mount Hart Homestead. We're here for three nights. We go down to Winjana for two nights. Then we head back east again on the east on the Gibb River Road to um, Mornington Wilderness Sanctuary for two nights. And then we head west towards Derby, but then head south to Fitzroy Crossing. And that's when we jump back off um, the Gibb River Road. So we have done the full Gibb River Road. A bit of tree stuff. So the sticker stays there. Ah, uh, I forgot to mention, sites here. Site costs, no powered sites. That's why there's generators, I suppose. Um, I think it's the best I can remember about 17 bucks a head per night, which isn't too bad for the Gibb River Road if you come out this way. Rightio, you talked me into it. Dinner tonight. Taking the Prince House out for dinner, as you know. 60 bucks a head. She paid for it. Oh, isn't that great, hey? I'm taking her out to earn some brandy points. She's paid for it. Three course set dinner. They um, will do pizzas and fish and chips down there as well. Pizzas are about 20 bucks a head. Fish and chips are the South Australian whiting, King George whiting and uh, chips. All right, finish the sneeze stuff. Yeah, the fish and chips is about 30, I think it's about 35 bucks a head. Okay, figure eight, yeah. set course, three course. 60 bucks and she paid for it. Ripper mate. See much of this? It's a pretty um yeah, it's a different sunset. Than here. We're at um Mount Hart Homestead check-in area. Uh, there's lots of cars here. Workshop out that to the left. You won't see that. You won't see too much down here either because there's a little bit of light. Little lights that you see as a little walkway. Off to the left is the bar area, sort of. And to the right is reception, and behind it is the restaurant. I'm just at school holidays. There's a um, team of, well, it's like a primary school here actually, or kiddie school. I've lost the boss, she's out there somewhere. Line up for the bar, absolutely huge. So this is the bar area of Mount Hart. The bar's busy. Most of the stuff's about 10 bucks. I was trying to buy a bottle of wine, 45 bucks. Pizza. Fish and chips. He's just about smashed it in here. Main course. Moroccan chicken. Sweet potato. Got some green stuff here as well. Looks like some onion, some parsnip. Hmm, we'll try and enjoy it. Orange and almond cake with bits. Gluten free. Bit of vanilla, something in there. Gonna enjoy this. Dinner done. 60 bucks. Yeah, it was the um, best bread I've had in a long time. And main meal. Moroccan chicken, lovely dessert, the uh, honey almond, uh, can't get past an almond sort of cake, I just love it, so it got my soft spot, great value, but if you want to fill your guts, uh, grab a pizza, I reckon here, 20 odd bucks, I'm going to go fish and chips and salad, 30 odd bucks. Yeah, probably not too bad considering the um, amount of stuff they cram on a plate. Prices for drinks, well, they're pretty common across, 10 bucks, so yeah, happy days.
Oh, what am I doing this morning? I alluded to yesterday that we probably had a um, compressor leak, like a high pressure air leak from, I reckon, um, the compressor side out down there somewhere. So while I'm looking for that, I'm going to go around and just check all the inlet arm hoses and just check under the bonnet as I do periodically and go through. Uh, if I find something obvious with the compressor leak I'll show you that. I suspect it's down there. We won't know until I have a look. Yeah I've taken the wheel off. I find it much easier to get to the clamps around the turbo area by doing that and I've taken this flap off as well. I've done up all the clamps except for two on the um, compressor side right behind the shock absorber they are and there's meant to be a hose clamp right there it's come off it's slid down a bit I should be able to get to that from the top of the spring um, mount and I'll have to take the shock absorber off to get into the one behind it real bugger Anyhow, I don't know if you can see the hose clamp. There it is there. Oh, all tied up. There it is there. So not a biggie by my standards. Um, as I say, I've done up all the clamps except for those two on the uh, pressure side. I'm going to do the uh, intake side as well, so it's from uh, air filter back down to the turbo as well just to make sure they're all tight. Another one of those situations where you're not too happy with the way the clamp's gone on. That's the original one there. I've put another one on just to the right of it. Like I said before, don't know how to tie knots, tie lots. Two hose clamps is better than one at the moment. Now I've just got to put this um, bit of plastic back up into place. Put the wheel back on. Almost done. Well, that's it for the um, check. I have some blocks under here. Look at this thing. Grab those. I need them. So that's it for today. Hopefully, um, if there's anything else that happens, it's as uh, simple as that. It's alright, gorge. The good thing about um, Mount Hart, I suppose, is the trucks that you go out to places like this are really close to the campground. This would only be from the last um, place that we're at, probably maybe three kilometres, so not too far. Class 4 track apparently. And two hours return. Dolorite. Dolorite's a mineral. That's also the name of this forge. Uh, it's this black stuff you see up in these really outcrops. Well, this is as far as we're going to go on Dolorite Gorge. Looks like there's a nice um, waterfall up there, sort of. <laughs> Won't be able to zoom in too close. close. That's it. Yes, it's one of those rocky walks. And the bus is already heading back. Uh, there's three creek crossings all up. This is the top one. Where we were swimming yesterday is um, the first one. So there's another one in between. Coming up to the um, second crossing is a marker just over there got a cross across here. So that's the middle crossing here. Third crossing just ahead of us where all those people are. They're just running below it. Where we were yesterday. So we haven't walked all the way up to the end of the falls. Some people just to join us now in the swimming hole. How about that, eh? Anyhow, we're going to go for a swim here. Because we can.
walking back over these rocks in, um, well, when you're wet, here the thongs go. It's probably not the smartest idea. Haven't fallen over yet. Little pool up here, a couple of people having a swim. Dip. As you can see, any creek, Mount Hart Station. It's about 8, 8.8 kilometres from the campground. Pretty easy track. Currently, the road used to go over the creek, but we've been told not to drive over the creek. 200 metre walk. Yeah, we'll walk it. Not really too much of a. Um, Swim on, but I suppose it'd be hot. Pretty enough. Easy access. The waterfalls here. Oh. Delish. I'll get my feet wet. That's about it though. Probably comparable to the water hole at the campsite. Go back out. People are um, having a swim down at the old road crossing. Probably a bit more water down there. That's crowded too. Barker's Pool, about four kilometres from the homestead. The uh, brochure they give you, or the page anyhow, suggests it's a swimming spot and fishing spot. I think it's um, part of the Barker River or Creek or something like that. It's safe enough to swim in, you wouldn't think there'd be any crocodiles in here. Pretty enough spot. Sunset lookout. Uh, less than two kilometres from the homestead. Got a big deck out here. suppose the scenery speaks for itself, it has its own beauty, doesn't it? Homestead's down that way and there's a runway between us and it, you have to cross the runway get to here. Limited parking. Got no idea why they got this shelter up here for. It's even a water tank there. Not connected though. There is another Trail, the Yellow Man's Gorge, it's about 20 odd kilometres from my homestead, but it's closed, so we won't be going up it. 